And welcome to uh, this latest episode of the Bull and the Bear podcast. I'm, uh, I'm your host, uh, Matt Clark, all with moneymarkets.com, also market analyst, uh, research analyst for moneymarkets.com. Uh, glad you're with us uh, on, uh, on our podcast day. So uh, we've got a lot of things to talk about. First, I'll tell you that uh, if you are listening to and you want to listen to a podcast, subscribe to the podcast, you can do so using Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and about 20 other different uh, uh you know, podcast providers out there that we are, uh, we are a part of and leave us a review, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, this, uh, we also video this, uh, this podcast. You can check that out on our new YouTube page. Just go to YouTube and type money and markets and uh, we will be right there. So we've got a wealth of uh, other content on there that, uh, I think you'll be interested in taking a look at these podcasts. We've got our week ahead series. We've got, uh, uh, you know, we're, we, we've got a one-on-one series where we kind of explain certain intricacies of the market. Uh, and then we've got uh, another new feature that uh, we're going to kind of, we're going to, we're going to dive into here in the coming weeks as well. You can, uh, you can check all that out. Just go to youtube.com and type in money in markets. Uh, if you do have a comment or a question, if there's a stock maybe you'd like us to talk about or a sector there that you'd like us to talk about, you can email us at the bull and bear at moneyandmarkets.com. And uh, we'd love to, uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, that way as well. So um, I'll jump right in. I've got, uh, I've got with me uh, Money Markets contributor Charles Sizemore and Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell on as, uh, as we do each and every, uh, each and every Friday and the weekend. And uh, you know, I, I, I usually take my cues from, uh, from, from Adam in terms of uh, you know, a sector that I like to pull stocks from. And, and uh, he, he sent this out to uh, his, his Green Zone Fortune readers uh, yesterday, I believe, or Wednesday, I'm sorry. And uh, what he does, and he can explain this a lot better than I can, um, but he takes all the sectors in the S&P and, and, and ranks them uh, uh, using his proprietary system. And I like to take the top, the top sector there that he, that he ranks and, and, and discuss some, intricate, some different stocks within that. And that's kind of how we, how we generate our methodology in terms of the stocks that we do discuss um, on, on this uh, weekend issue, edition of the Bull and the Bear. And the the sector that he's that that uh, he he had as as its leader uh, this week is, is an interesting one. It, it's it's one of the most diverse um, sectors in the S and P five hundred in that it, it it encompasses a pretty wide range of companies. Uh, it you've got uh, chemical companies, you've got construction material companies, glass, paper, forest product packaging. And even beyond that, you've got metals, materials, and mining companies that are also part of, of this sector. And the sector, of course, we're talking about is the materials sector. Um, and, and it has, uh, obviously, it went through a, a, the March drop, as everything did. Um, but, but it has enjoyed a, a pretty nice bounce of late. Um, if you look at the S&P materials sector uh, ETF, which is an ETF that tracks uh, you know, some of the larger material stocks, uh, it's up about 14% in the last six months, but since reaching its low of about $40 in March, it's jumped more than 55%. And that ticker symbol is XLB uh, if, you, if you are interested. So what I did is I, I, I pulled three stocks as I usually do and, and uh, wanted to kind of riff on those, on those stocks uh, a bit today. And I'll jump in and, and just start with the first one. Uh, the first one is, uh, it, it is related to what is probably the hottest area of the overall market in general. Um, this is a mining company that is, I believe, the largest in the world. Um, it's got a market cap of $55 billion. It has operations or assets in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, uh, Hispaniola, which is the Dominican Republic, um, Peru, which Charles is uh, uh, very, very suited to talk about, Suriname, uh, which is in South America, Argentina, Chile, Australia, and Ghana. Um, as of the end of 2019, it had uh, proven and probable gold reserves of 100.2 million ounces, which means it has a, a massive amount of, of, of gold reserve. And the company I'm talking about here is Newmont Corporation. Uh, it trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol NEM, and I'll try to put the ticker symbol down here um, if you're watching on video, but if you're listening to us, it's uh, New York Stock Exchange NEM. And, and I think this is a, it's an interesting company in that, you know, it's in one of the hottest with, with gold being the way it is and, and, and skyrocketing the way it is. Gold miners are, are just raking it in. And one thing to remember is that gold miners typically, traditionally, make profit regardless of the price of gold. Just that profit gets larger the, the higher the price of gold goes because it costs the same amount to mine the gold. That, you know, their, their costs up front are, are the same no matter what. 
So where they make their money is when the price of gold goes up, they sell that gold by the ounce or by the truck or, or by you know, the ton or whatever, whatever they use. And the higher the price, uh, it offsets the, the, the pretty static cost of mining. So right now, gold miners uh, and anyone, any, any companies affiliated with gold, gold mining, uh, you know, things like that, are experiencing quite a nice, uh, a nice bump. Uh, and they have over the last, you know, couple weeks. Um, so, so that's why I wanted to kind of jump in and, and talk about this first, um, th this first company. And I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to Charles Sizemore and, and, and have him give his take on, on Newmont Corp. Uh, Charles? Yeah, it's funny. I, I do have a funny aside on, on Newmont. I, I, um, my in-laws in Peru uh, breed horses. You know, that's, that's, that's their business. And I was at a lunch where uh, a couple of the, uh, the breeders were just kind of talking and, you know, chit chatting or whatnot. And uh, one guy's phone rings and he, he picks it up and says, Oh guys, so, sorry, I, I got to go. It's the CEO of Newmont mining on the phone. And, you know, we, we got to talk thinking, Oh yeah. I mean, my lunches regularly get interrupted by the, the CEO of Newmont mining calling. Of course, that's just a normal, a, a normal nonchalant thing in that, that world. Huh? But um, anyway, um, I, I like Newmont right now uh, for really just, one reason. Um, I, I'm, I'm very bullish on gold, as we've discussed uh, on this podcast a few times. Um, I, I think with the amount of uh, monetary easing we have around the world, with the amount of deficit spending we have around the world, um, we have this perception that the, the, the monetary system is under stress, that it's, that it's actually at risk for the first time in decades. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen, but that's the perception. The perception is that, that uh, the system is under attack or under stress, and uh, it's a, a prudent thing to do is to have at least part of your savings, part of your, your wealth outside of dollars, outside of euros, outside of paper currency in general, and it's gold. Uh, that's fueling a massive uh, price spike in, in, in the price of gold and is one that I think probably has longer to run. So you buy gold miners really for one reason only. You buy them because you're bullish on gold. Gold miners can be thought of as a leveraged bet on the barbarous relic, as, a, as they call it. And so I, I, I am bullish on Newmont Mining really for those reasons. The stock has good momentum at the moment. Um, I think that will continue. Okay. And uh, I'll bring in uh, uh, Money Markets Chief uh, Investment Strategist, Adam O'Dell, and get his take. Adam, what, do you, what, do you, what, is your, what are your thoughts on, on Newmont Mining? Or Newmont Corp, rather, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Newmont's a great pick. Uh, it rates very highly on my six-factor uh, green zone uh, stock rating model. <clears throat> rates a 95 out of 100, so there aren't too many stocks that can rate, rate higher than that. Uh, as far as a macro, a large, long-term macroeconomic trend, uh, I'm super bullish gold, not just for now, not, not, not for a short-term play, but for a longer-term play. Um, you know, gold was in a really tough bear market from like 2011 through 2013, and then it just traded sideways. This was all precious metals, but particularly gold just traded sideways for three, four, five years in a row, just creating a really strong uh, basing pattern, a bottoming pattern is what we call it. Um, so I started seeing signs of a bullish breakout of this bottoming pattern really about uh, 12 to 18 months ago. And so I was kind of watching it. There were a couple of false starts. I wrote about it. We made a couple of short-term gold trades in my Cycle 9 Alert service, but I was really waiting for a longer-term signal. And I started seeing signs of that last October. I spoke at an investment conference and I gave uh, 20 uh, investment picks for the, for the next uh, you know, year or, or beyond. And uh, several of them were in alternative markets, so outside of the stock market. And one of my top alternative market uh, picks was gold. And basically, one of the easiest ways to access gold, the price of gold specifically, is GLD, um, is the Spider Gold uh, Trust. GLD is the ticker symbol. So, you know, year to date, GLD is up 30%. Um, Charles made a mention that buying gold stocks is a leveraged bet on the price of gold. And that's absolutely true. If you look at GLD, it's up 30% year to date, but uh, gold stocks like Newmont Mining or Barrick Gold, they're up about 50% year to date. So you can get a lot more bang for your buck if you buy a gold stock than if you buy uh, GLD outright. Although GLD is still a great, a great option for people that want a little bit less volatility in, in, the, in the play. Um, but the point is, you know, and you hit on this, Matt, yourself, uh, that over the past four to five to six years, when the price of gold has been really low, these gold stock producers, uh, these gold producers have had to figure out how to get their costs down, how to 
spend less on fuel and less on machinery, less on CapEx expenses. So they've, they've figured out how to cut costs to the bone. And now that prices of gold are rising, uh, every bit of, you know, every extra dollar, $10, $100 of gold, of, uh, per ounce of, of gold that they can get in the, in the spot market, um, that just goes straight to their bottom line. So they've already figured out how to cut costs to the bone. Their costs are not increasing in this environment. I mean, with energy costs low as they are, they're definitely not increasing. Um, so everything just really goes straight to the bottom line and then goes straight to shareholders. So that's why I think gold stocks are a great pick right now. Newmont, uh, you can't, you can't uh, bet against them really. They're, they're top rated in my model. Uh, Barrett Gold is also top rated. Uh, in full disclosure, I've recommended a long-term stock play on Barrett Gold and my Green Zone Fortunes uh, service. And we're already up double digits in that play. I've also recommended an option play uh, on Barrett Gold in my Cycle 9 Alert service. We just closed that trade out uh, uh, last week or earlier this week actually for a 483% profit. So we're basically using options to leverage an, a leveraged, uh, an already leveraged um, play on gold. So you know this is, this is a great short-term trend, but it's also a very great uh, long-term trend. I think it'll happen, the, the gold rally is just getting underway. It'll, it'll be in place for years. Um, if anyone signs up for my Green Zone Fortunes uh, service, I have four gold picks, my top four gold stocks. A bear gold is one of them, but I have three other ones that I think can do just as well. And a silver stock, because typically when gold goes up, silver goes up even more. So we should definitely take a look at that. And I'm, I'm right in line with you. I, I like Newmont. I, I like its fundamentals. I like its, um, you know, I, I like where it's at in terms of its ratios. Um, I, I like how it is, how, how it stacks up against the rest of, uh, you know, the gold miners and the rest of its, of its industry and, and the rest of the material sector. Um, and so I, re I really like it. And I think the overall, I'm, I'm with Adam, I'm with Charles. I think the price of gold is going to keep going up. And I think that miners like Newmont uh, and others are, are going to reap those benefits. So I, I think all three of us are, are in agreement that Newmont Mining at Newmont Corp, if you're not in it, um, might be worth, uh, certainly worth a look, uh, uh, worth your time to take a look at it. The next stock is, uh, you know, quite a bit different. It's not a miner. It's not gold. It's not, you know, anything like that. It's, it's best known for developing and manufacturing and selling paint. Um, now we've talked about PPG before, which, you know, which is, this is not it. Um, but this is a company that is very, very similar, but it's, it's more of a niche into the residential market, the individual consumer market, and not so much um, the, the large scale like automotive OEMs or things like that, although they do supply it. Um, this company also produces wood stains, wood varnishes. Like it, it, it really runs the gamut in terms of, of, of different paint stains and, and treatments for, uh, for, for wood and other, uh, um, and other materials. And it's been in business since about 1866. So it is an older company. It is uh, definitely stood the test of time. It is based in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, the company I'm referring to here is Sherwin-Williams Company. It trades under the New York Stock Exchange ticker of SHW. Um, so um, I'll, I'll start again. I'll start with Charles. And Charles, give me your, give me your thoughts on Sherwin-Williams. Sure. Um, I, I, I like it. Um, I do worry a little bit that it's it's gotten a little bit expensive. Um, it's by no means a cheap stock right now, but of course, uh, few things are. You know, this is an overall expensive market. This is a mildly expensive stock in um, a, a fairly expensive market. So that is uh, one knock against it. Um, I would say it, it does have a, a good macro backdrop right now. Um, as we've seen over the last six months, uh, people have nothing to do, so they're tinkering with their houses. Uh, I built two birdhouses for my kids uh, last week, in fact, and bought wood stain that I didn't check the label, but might have been made by Sherman Williams. I, I don't know. Uh, and that's an anecdotal example, but it's, it's true. People are still, you know, even though we're well into the reopening process, uh, most of the country is still is, is basically reopened apart from you know bars and, and to some extent restaurants and movie theaters and whatnot people are still just sort of spending more time at home and they're tinkering in the house they're painting my, my wife is is bugging me to, to, to paint uh the kids rooms um I, I may try to dodge that bullet if i can but uh, I, I may get roped into that before the summer's over we'll we'll, we'll see uh, I'll probably just pay someone to do it because I, I really don't want to mess with it. But uh, the, the the fact is, I, I know our experience is being um, reproduced, you know, millions of times over across the country, uh, yeah, and and this 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 company is a beneficiary of that. So again, I'm a little concerned on the valuation, 
I, I might um, might not back up the truck on this one, but it it, it has uh, it does have some momentum behind it over the last several months, and I think that probably continues. Adam, what are your thoughts on Sherwin Williams? Yeah, I agree with a lot of the same storylines. Um, Sherwin Williams is a is a longer term buy for me right now. It's actually pretty close to triggering a shorter term uh, buy signal on my Cycle Nine Alert service, which means that once it triggers that uh, that shorter term buy signal, if it does. It means that we have a great probability of seeing uh, outperformance over a two to three month period. Uh, so shares of Sherman Williams are trading at their highs right now. It has good momentum. Uh, Charles was right about their valuation. Uh, of, of my six factor model value, a number of value metrics uh, is one of the major buckets. And uh, Sherwin Williams rates a 37 out of 100 on its valuation metrics. And that means that you know, there are uh, you know, about 60, 63% uh, more uh, of all the companies out there that have a better valuation. But you have to look at what you get for that valuation as well. You get a very high quality company. So Sherwin Williams rates a 91 on all of its quality metrics, like uh, return on assets and investment and equity, its profit margins, its debt to equity uh, ratios. So you're getting a quality company. You're also still getting a growth company. I mean, you think of Sherwin Williams, it's not a high growth industry, but uh, but my uh, my six factor ranking model still rates at a 95 on its growth metrics. So earnings per share, net income, revenue growth it still rates very highly. Uh, also volatility, you're getting a low volatile stock in Sherwin Williams. Uh, my my factor uh, rating model rates at an 89 uh, out of 100 on its volatility. So it's a low volatility stock. We know that low volatility stocks counterintuitively actually outperform high volatility stocks. And when you can get superior risk-adjusted returns from a low volatility stock like Sherwin Williams, meaning you can get a good return, but with very little, uh, you know, lesser daily movements and lesser wild swings in the stock, then that's going to be a stock that you can hold for a lot longer uh, period of time without getting kind of shaken out by by nervousness of, of a of a pullback or whatnot. So, you know, Sherwin Williams is a large company. It has um, not the best valuation. But overall, it rates very highly on my model. Um, I think it's a good longer term buy. If we see a little bit more mo momentum in the short term over the next week or two, I think that uh, Sherwin Williams could have another uh, really good run over the next two to three uh, months, which is what my Cycle 9 Alert service looks for. And uh, overall, I think that it's kind of a recession proof uh, company. The fact that you know if we do go into a recession or kind of a uh, you know, pause in, in, in growth. Uh, I th think people are still going to be uh, kind of uh, painting their house and painting rooms, and, and, and it's not a big purchase for, for most folks. So I, I like Sherwin Williams right now. And I agree, and I, and I agree with it. I, I think you touched on it uh, nicely, Adam, when you talked about it being recession proof, because, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, very low mortgage rates, we're seeing very low, you know, and increased home buying. And when people buy homes, whether they're old homes or new homes, what do they usually do? They try to decorate and they try to do their own thing for them. And this is where a company like Sherwin Williams can make a big, make a big impact. So I think regardless of, of, of a recession that we're in, I mean, you know, Q2, you know, GDP is down 34%. So that's, you know, obviously not, not spelling good news for the overall economy, but I, and, that, and that's why, that's why I like Sherwin Williams is that it is a recession proof stock valuation. I agree. It's, 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 it's touching, it's borderline where I would want to be. Um, but I, I think when you look at the quality of it and its growth potential, um, I, I think that outweighs any of those, any of those concerns about its valuation. Uh, the third and final company that we want to talk about today, uh, this is a company that produces and supplies construction material in the U.S. And by construction material, I don't mean lumber. Um, I mean stone, gravel, concrete. It's been, it's used by uh, state governments to to uh, to use for road paving and 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 and, and things like that. Um, it's it's a it's another very it's another old company that has been around for a long time. 1909, uh, based in Birmingham, Alabama, and I this company is Vulcan Materials Company. Uh, trades under the New York Stock Exchange ticker VMC. Uh, again, this is you know in terms of you know if you're driving on a road, whether you're in Florida, whether you're in Texas, whether you're in West Virginia, whether you're in Kansas. Um, odds are the road that you're driving on, Vulcan materials had something to do with providing the, uh, the, the materials that are going into that road, whether it's asphalt or concrete or, uh, or what have you, or rock roads in, the, in, the, in, in, in terms of like rural Kansas. Um, so, uh, so Charles, first off, your thoughts on Vulcan. Yeah, so Vulcan, I, I'm, I'm cautiously bullish on it. Uh, I, I think uh, you, you have two kind of countervailing forces here. One is we do have an economy that's in really bad shape. I, if you saw the headline GDP number 
it was down by a third. Our economy literally shrunk by a third last quarter. Uh, so, so there's there's clearly a lot of a lot of slack in the economy right now. Um, there may not be a lot of private construction projects initiated. Now that said, there is uh, government funded infrastructure spending, and so I think the I think Vulcan becomes a play on um, on the election. If you think that it's likely uh, that Joe Biden wins and that the Democrats uh, hold the House. Uh, Republicans may still keep the Senate, but if you have the House, which is is the primary body for uh, uh, budget writing, and the presidency in the same party, I think you do have a recipe for increased infrastructure spending. That's something that both candidates have uh, emphasized. Um, uh, Trump has not really been able to move the needle on that um, over the the last you know three years of his presidency. Um, I, We'll see if, if I don't know that he'd be able to do it if the Democrats kept the House and he kept the White House. I, I don't know that they're going to be able to agree on a, on a big infrastructure bill. Whereas if if Biden won, his own party is controlling the purse strings. I think the likelihood that a big uh, infrastructure bill got passed would be a lot more likely in that scenario. Uh, that that should be a, a good market for Vulcan. So I would say I, I'm. You know, under either candidate, I would say the stock probably does okay. Um, again, both have really talked a good game about about infrastructure spending. I think it will do better under a, a Biden presidency than a Trump presidency, but it'll probably do okay either way. Okay, uh, diving deeper into the political realm, I like that. That's uh, that's an interesting take, um, Adam. What are your thoughts on Vulcan? Uh, for me, Vulcan is a pass. Uh, it doesn't rate awfully on my six-factor model. It rates a 61. So it's still probably going to produce, you know, be able to produce market-beating gains over the next three years or so, but maybe to a, a only slight degree. Its momentum isn't really there. Uh, its value is basically right in the middle of, of the whole uh, stock market. Its volatility is higher than average. Um, it's good, got good quality and growth, and uh, I can certainly see that um, – you know, if, if we start to see that Biden is more the favorite, that, you know, the, the anticipation of increased infrastructure spending uh, could kind of light a match under this stock. But I'm not seeing that right now. Um, you know, one of the things that with my Cycle 9 alert service, and you kind of touched on why you picked the materials sector, Matt, this week. Um, one of the things we look at is for multiple signals to kind of all converge on the same conclusion. So we're looking for, you know, a sector where the entire sector, as, as judged by like the spider ETF, like XLB, when the entire sector is showing market beating momentum relative to the other sectors, when uh, stocks within that sector are in an uptrend, uh, when stocks within that sector are also beating out the, the rest of the, the sector. So for me, Vulcan is very average on those measures. It's not in an uptrend right now. It's, it's actually a downtrend. Um, it's still 20% off of its uh, late 19 or 2019 highs. So it's got 20, you know, it's got to make up that 20% before it goes to new highs. It's below its 200 day moving average. It's in a six month negative trend, according to my cycle nine uh, trend indicator. Um, so it's really like, I like to buy stocks that are already trending higher because doing that not only increases your odds of success on a bullish trade, but it decreases the amount of drawdown that you subject yourself to or that you're at risk if the trade doesn't go your favor. So I like to buy stocks that are already trending higher and on that measure, Vulcan doesn't meet it. Uh, also, it's momentum relative to the market and relative to the, the broader material sector is very average right now. So um, I'm not really seeing any signals that, that the Vulcan is a, is a good uh, trade right now. Um, as we get closer into the elections um, you know, cycle, as, as we get closer to November, I'll certainly keep an eye on this one and see if uh, Charles's thesis is, uh, is anywhere playing out. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be a pass on Vulcan. And I think you said it right in terms of, 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 of how I'm looking at it, and that is average. There's nothing here, whether you're looking at just its chart, whether you're looking at raw data, whether you're doing fundamental analysis and looking at the company's balance sheets, there's really nothing here that makes Vulcan stand out. It, there, there's just there, there's nothing there. It's 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 ratios are, you know, on par with the industry at, with the industry average. Uh, their return ons are slightly higher, but not enough to really you know move a needle for me. Um, you know, their their you know debt to equity is pretty much in line with the industry. There's nothing here that screams this stock is 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 making a breakout. Um, you know, in fact. 
it's only about a percentage point off of the rest of the heavy building material and aggregate uh, products sub, sub a subsector in terms of, of where its stock price is. So that to me, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't speak to me in terms of saying that this is something that you want to, you want to start going in for, you know, how the political climate plays out. I, you know, I don't know, both, both candidates have talked about infrastructure being a, a key point. Um, you know, but there's a lot more that you can say one thing and, and something different you know, winds up happening as it always does in, in politics. So um, political, politicalness aside, uh, you know, right now Vulcan is, is, is not a buy for me. Um, it, it's, you know, I'm not saying you stay away from it. I'm saying you keep a watch on it, but I, I just don't, nothing is, there, there's not one number of its technical analysis or its fundamental analysis that says to me, boom, you need to take a hard look at this. I, 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 there, there's just nothing there. Could that change? Absolutely. Is Vulcan a bad company? By no stretch of the imagination is it. It's been around for a long time. It can't be all, it can't, that bad of a company. But in terms of, you know, putting your investment money, you're putting your investment into it right now, I would say no. So just kind of recap, uh, in terms of Newmont, we're all kind of on board. It's, it's gold. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's making a, it's roaring. It's, it's going to continue to do so. Um, anything related to gold now, well, not everything, but it, you know, a lot of things related to gold miners, um, things like that worth your time to get into. Uh, Sherwin Williams, um, also uh, it's a recession proof stock. It's a stock that I think all three of us, um, look at and, and, and it, it, it factors very well, scores very well, rates very highly, um, and, and has a lot of potential to, and, and even if we are in a recession, it's one of those stocks that will, that will, will beat through that and probably come out better on the other side. Um, Vulcan materials, I, I, I get the impression and Charles, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like more of a wait and see, I think for all of us, just because, it's just not there right now that would that would suggest you know now is the time to invest and, and I, yeah, I'm not backing up the truck to buy it today. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that, that is accurate. Exactly. So so it's 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 two buys and and a and a and a wait, but not right now for us uh, on these three. But uh, um, I do I do want to thank uh, Money Markets Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell for joining us, as well as contributor Charles Sizemore. Uh, appreciate their time each and every uh, Friday and the weekend. Uh, I, schedules are busy, and I, I love how they take time, and we're able to 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 riff about these kind of things. Um, stay tuned. We've also got, uh, if you're checking out our YouTube page, we also have our week ahead. Uh, we look at uh, what's coming out on Wall Street next week. Uh, some big, some big things, some interesting things coming out. I can tell you, uh, tell you that right now, but uh, pay attention for that. That'll be on our YouTube page as well as on moneymarkets.com. Next week, we'll be back uh, Wednesday with another uh, Bull and Bear podcast as well as uh, on Friday with, uh, with Adam and Charles and myself. And uh, look forward to that. Check us out on our podcast channels, Apple, uh, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, any, whatever your podcast listening uh, choice is, we're probably on it. Uh, YouTube is also another great, another uh, potential. We've just uh, launched a new YouTube page. Check, check it out, subscribe, get, get alerts as to when we put out new videos. We do it all the time. And also make sure you check out uh, moneymarkets.com where uh, we all, all, all three of us provide our insights on, on, on various, uh, various stocks, various topics, things like that. We want to try to provide you with the safest and most sound investment, uh, investment information to, so that you can make good, solid decisions with what to do with your money. So for uh, Adam O'Dell and Charles Sizemore, I am, uh, I am Matt Clark. Uh, if you have a comment or question, uh, anything like that, email us, the bull and bear at uh, moneymarkets.com. But until then, uh, for the three of us, I certainly hope you all have a great weekend and we'll be back on Wednesday. Until then, safe trading. <laughs>